You've heard of amps that do a lot of things, but none very well. Well, this is not that. This amp does a lot of things very, very well. I think they finally made the perfect amp. Sounds great in your room or on the stage. Let's check it out. <laughs>
Hey, all right, everybody. What is up? This is Old Guy Jammin' here with the Angle Fireball 25. Super impressed with this amp. Let me tell you a little bit about it. The only thing I changed on that lame attempt at playing some classics is I went uh, lead gain from there for the, uh, well, just to start with, the Motley Crue stuff, the Van Halen choke, and then uh, <laughs> up to there for the EMG detuned haberdash. And then uh, from about two o'clock up, it does start to mush up, but that's great for doomy stuff. If you want just big open chords, it stays articulate, but it does start to mush up. But all the way from where it's at, two o'clock, all the way down to practically nothing is really usable gain, which is pretty exciting. All right, and you've got the lead boost, which sounds good, or mid boost, I should say. It sounds good with the gain channel. I prefer to have the clean channel. Um, I don't like the mid boost on the clean. But another thing, too, that bluesy stuff was with the uh, Dire Straits, was with the clean gain over here, just all the way up at 3 o'clock. It'll go on up further down than that, and you just get a really, really nice, chimey, clean tone, which is cool. And, um, but, you know, clean, it's got a great clean channel. Just take my word for it. Um, but you don't buy this amp really for clean. But it covers so much tonal ground that it's uh, quickly becoming my favorite amp. Uh, also, you will want to invest in this four switch um, four button foot switch made this one uh, you can check that out on uh, four button DIY PV foot switch if you want to see how to make one of these it's really basic um, anybody will be able to do that and it really opens up the the amp nicely takes pedals like a champ I had the Iron Ball, and I think this is a, a much superior amp to the Iron Ball. The Iron Ball clean channel was always kind of lacking for me, and the uh, and it didn't. I didn't think it took pedals as well as this, where I haven't had any issue with this at all. I thought I was going to have an issue when I wanted to switch over from the clean channel with a loop in the clean channel and switch over to the dirty channel for um, a lead, I thought there was going to be a mismatch in volume, but because it has its own lead channel volume, aside from the master, I was able to dial that way down and the gain way down on the lead channel and had a really nice uh, bluesy, soft driven lead tone uh, for something that I had played over the clean. Now I wouldn't need to do that necessarily, I could just put a pedal on while the clean channel was on for it to add a little girth of dirt but it will accommodate that. It's just an incredible build. The matching Pro Cab, the 1x12 Pro Cab, crazily overpriced, but gosh, what a beautiful setup that would be to have this on top of the 1x12 Pro Cab. The grill work is incredible. I like the oversized 1x12. It's kind of got a slant look to it, although I think the speaker is flat, but the cab's got an angle to it. The two together would look incredible. Anyway, um, Phil McKnight and Guitar John of Sonic Studios also recently had this posted as their number one piece of gear. Uh, it says a lot. You can cover a lot of ground. It could be the amp to end all, do everything amp. Uh, so far, I haven't run into an amp that allows you to go from a Telecaster that does it really well to a Les Paul with minimal switching i didn't do anything other than maybe put a pedal on and then adjust the lead gain the two channels are very well balanced to each other so that the shared eq isn't a problem which is a problem with so many single eq amps you have a tone you like on the dirty side but then when you go to the clean it's oh, you always want it's not quite right and with the angle it's not a problem I stole this off Reverb. Now, this is something to keep in mind too. This last purchase, this was just a few weeks old. 
guy was getting rid of it. We worked, it, even though it was advertised on Reverb, we went around Reverb, worked together. Uh, I did give up, you know, the securities of Reverb, but I still had the securities of PayPal, but got it at a very nice price and I couldn't be happier with it. Also, the attenuation on the back, the iron ball, you have to be load, uh, plugged into a certain ohm cab in order for you to use the attenuation, and it's got a lot of other speaker jacks. This one has two speaker outs, and either way you hook it up, the attenuator works, so you don't have to worry about matching ohmage. The attenuator is full power, medium power, low power, and then off and it works great. It's not an effects loop volume trick. It is a genuine full attenuator with a big load, a bank of resistors between the output stage and the speaker. So all that beautiful tone is getting to your speaker just at a reduced volume. It's much like a Marshall Brake or the, uh, the Bugera Power Silk 100. Same kind of deal with the attenuation going through the appropriate resistors and then in into your speaker. Also, the it's better than the PV. I like it better than the PV for, well, they're two different kind of amps, but the PV it's a, is its own beast. But what the PV lacks is a, uh, the ability to a, adjust the noise gate. Whereas this one, you can adjust the noise gate on the back to make it very tight, like you saw in the video. It cuts off quick at a, a pretty high threshold, still cuts off, or you can lower it considerably to where it's completely off even. So from completely off to really, really on, uh, so that you can have some of those more 80s type tunes with the chords and ringing out, and you can turn your volume down and, and play without the noise gate interfering. But to have it adjustable is, is genius. Why the PV isn't adjustable, I'll never know. So great uh, four button foot switch. The foot switch allows you to channel switch, of course, right there. This is a overall volume boost. This is the mid boost. And this is the effects loop on and off, which I'm really starting to dig because if you wanna go simplistic and just have a overdrive pedal and a delay in your loop, then for crying out loud, you don't need a pedal board you can have your foot switch out there and be rocking and use the natural reverb of the room or if you want a one reverb pedal that's on you know reverb's not a necessity but uh and then with your effects loop on and off you can use that for all your lead tones with the delay kicking in with your overdrive pedal of choice to lead out over those hard rock rhythms so super impressed Angle Fireball, much better in my opinion than the Iron Ball. It does get mushier than the Iron Ball. It's not quite as dry though. The Iron Ball is a little more brittle and dry, just like the Mesa Mark V. This is a beautiful, not compromise, but it, for me it's just, it allows me that dry, tanky Mesa type tone, but I can also play it for uh, with less of that as you turn the gain town that tanky dryness goes away and you have more of 80s type you know hard rock also i gotta highlight again this uh mesa flux drive right here this sucker i'm finding is shooting to the top of my overdrive list really really like it okay so anyway that's that's it it's killer I, I don't know why the uh, 1x12 cab is 600 bucks, but it, it's fall. It's getting to be fall almost. People are going to want their chimneys cleaned. So if I get busy, it's also gutter cleaning time because the leaves are going to fall. So enough gutters and enough chimneys. Oh, There's just a lot to pay for that. But imagine that cab with a DV77 Mick Thompson speaker in it with this head. Psh, good night. Be crazy good. All right. Old guy jam is out. We'll talk to y'all later.